Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In the last episode we unboxed and assembled the Skywatcher Star Adventurer GTI mount. Now in this episode we're going to power up the mount and we're going to take a close look at the different ways that you can control it, uh, the different apps and which one you would use and when. So without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, so first up, let's have a look at option one uh, for powering up this mount, which is to use batteries. Uh, now, there is under this cover here, there are two um, battery containers. Uh, basically, I would take this off first, this little cover over the poloscope, because if you don't, it will definitely fall off. And watch this little screw, because unfortunately, it's not captive, so it will, it's a horrible little thing, it will just fall. So I'll just take those out, then we just ease this off gently, there we go, just pull it out, put that down there. So then we have these two uh, battery compartments, uh, they each take four AA size batteries. So you'd put your eight batteries in, four on each side. And this thing is a little bit fiddly actually, but then we've got to try and get this back on. And there are some little, four, three little nibs, little nibs, one on each end and one in the middle that just hold it in place. Yeah, I just heard it click into place there. We take the little screw. That's it. Then we can just put the poloscope cover back on, just clips on, and that's it. So that's option one, uh, which is to use batteries. Okay, so next up, let's take a uh, look at option two, and that is to use uh, a 12 volt power plug, a standard 12 volt power plug, uh, as is used by uh, most astronomical equipment. It's a 5.5 mil outer diameter and 2.1 mil inner diameter uh, plug with a positive center connection. So in other words, the, the little pin is positive. Okay, and uh, that just goes into this power socket here. This wire here could either uh, be connected to uh, a 12 volt power pack or uh, mains powered uh, 12 volt power brick, you know, whichever you prefer really. So I'm going to use this uh, Echo Flow power pack to power up this mount. Uh, this is actually a rather heavy duty uh, power pack. You wouldn't uh, in reality probably need anything like this at all. Uh, I just happen to have it because I use it for a, a much more heavy duty setup that requires a lot of power. But anyway, um, you can get you can get much smaller versions of this but um something like this is actually really useful because it does allow you to power up all sorts of different bits of equipment so it's not just for the mount it will uh, enable you to power up your computer and your cameras and all this kind of stuff so i'm just going to plug that in a minute and we just put that in there so next thing i'm going to do i'm going to show you how to connect a physical uh, hand controller to this. Now the mount doesn't come with a hand controller and you actually don't need one. Uh, there is an app you can use with your phone or tablet which allows you to connect via Wi-Fi to the mount and for most people that is going to be a, a, a better solution. Uh, I suppose the benefits of the hand controller is that um, it is effectively a self-contained computer. It's got a large object catalog. You can enter coordinates manually uh, and it also has things like a star line routine. Uh, the other benefit of it is that it's obviously quite tactile. It's got nice big buttons. Uh, it's good to use if you're out somewhere in the cold with gloves on, then it's a lot easier than trying to use a phone. It doesn't rely on Wi-Fi. It's hardwired, so it's more responsive. 
Um, it's just a good thing, particularly if you have just a DSLR, uh, a telephoto lens, and you're doing Milky Way photography, that kind of thing, then maybe the hand controller is actually much more convenient, uh, much more straightforward. However, uh, it's a pretty expensive thing, so you, you don't really want to be buying that uh, unless you need it. Anyway, we're going to now take a look at a hand controller, how to do the basic setup, uh, and how you can kind of steer them out with it. Uh, just basic stuff, really. Here's the hand controller. It's a, a Synscan hand controller. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug the, uh, the cable in from the hand control, which is this one here. Plug that into the mount. Then we power up. There we go. So I'll just show you how you set this up. You just hit enter. And it'll give you the, uh, the normal warning about um, looking at the sun. Hit enter to move forward if you want to. Uh, then you put your longitude and latitude in. I'll just make something up. I'll just keep it simple for the moment. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Time zone we'll say is uh, where it is, that's fine. Elevation, that's fine, five meters above sea level. Uh, now this is one you've got to watch out for. Um, uh, it's in American date format, that's the thing to really remember. So say we'll put in um, And uh, better get the year right, I suppose. Yes, enter. Near enough. We put in a time. I'll just accept that time, but obviously you can put in whatever time you like. Daylight saving. Go to the arrows at the bottom. Right, it'll just tell you Polaris's position. Actually, you probably really don't need that, but that's when you were doing um, polar alignment in the old-fashioned way. Another bit of Polaris information. Now, this is where you would begin your star alignment. I can't obviously do that because it's uh, daylight, but um, if I wanted to do a star alignment, this would be where I would select one for yes. But anyway, I'm going to select uh, two for no. I'm just going to show you then uh, the basic use of this hand controller. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is set the rate, which is the speed at which the mount moves or slews. Uh, so we hit the number two button, which says rate. Then we pick a number between uh, one and nine. One being the slowest speed and nine being the fastest. So I'll pick nine. Now I can use the four arrow cursors to move the mount Left and right will move them out in right ascension, and up and down will move them out in declination. So if I hit the uh, right hand arrow, and the left hand arrow, so that's moving us in right ascension. Then I'm going to hit the up arrow, and the down arrow, and that will move us in declination. Uh, now, just to show you, if I select, say, let's move from rate 9 to rate 6, so I hit the rate button, then I hit the 6 button. Uh, now, if I repeat that, so I hit the right arrow. Now, as you can see, it's moving very slowly, but it's still moving. If I hit the left button, and up, and down. Uh, and you can go right down to speed one, which is incredibly slow. So you do speeds uh, speeds one and two, uh, mainly for very fine adjustment and framing. If you've got a target in shot and you want to just tweak it a, li a little bit, that's what you would use those buttons for. Anyway, that gives you the basic setup uh, for the SynScan hand controller. 
and just how to uh, navigate the actual telescope manually uh, using that. So next up we're going to see how we connect them out to Wi-Fi and we're going to take a look at the SynScan Pro app that you can use on your phone or tablet. Now this app is quite similar actually to the hand controller but it does have one or two extra features. Um, for example there is a kind of polar align helper on there which will help you to sort of nail your polar align maybe a bit more accurately than you would do just using the hand controller but largely very similar. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at the SynScan Pro app. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go to the Wi-Fi connection on my tablet. We find the SynScan connection, connect to it. That's that. Then uh, we start up the SynScan Pro app. Going to allow, allow again, just give it the permissions it needs. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the uh, basic controls here for just, just moving them out manually. First thing, obviously, I think we need to do is there's a connect button up here, so we'll press that. Okay, we're in equatorial mode, which is where we want to be. Right, um, yes, at the bottom of the screen, we have a, a set of direction arrows. A little bit different to a hand control of this because you've actually got um, eight arrows instead of the normal four. Normally, you can sort of just go, uh, there's a left and a right and an up and a down. This appears to be able to go um, in diagonal directions as well. Now. The next thing is uh, the speed controller. So at the moment, if you look at the little rectangle in the middle, it's uh, giving us five. Now, by using the little arrows at the top, top left and right of the cursors, we can increase that speed. Um, so nine is your maximum slew speed. Um, so I'm just going to hit some of these buttons now, and we'll, we, we can watch what happens. So these, these buttons here, they're moving us in right ascension. And then the, the up and down will be declination. And then, as I say, quite actually quite helpfully, you can go diagonally as well. So it's moving in both axes um, simultaneously, which is a pretty cool thing, actually. Of course, we can reduce the speed. So if I go down to, say, 7, it's a bit slower, 6. And as you can see, it's getting a lot slower now, 5. And by the time you get down to 1, that will be really slow, which allows you to make real micro adjustments to where you're pointing. So really, that's how uh, you connect the SynScan app uh, on your phone or tablet. And that's just giving you the basics of how you can maneuver the telescope. Okay, so the final method of connection we're going to look at today is the EQMOD method. Now, EQMOD is a protocol that various pieces of software can use to communicate with astronomical mounts. And today I'm going to show you EQMOD in conjunction with an ASI Air. So now we're going to look at a third way of connecting to this mount, and this time we're going to use a, a, an EQMOD cable. Uh, now this uh, this EQ mod cable actually fits into the hand controller port, like so. And again, we'll just plug the power back in. Uh, now the EQ mod cable, the other end of it is connected. It's uh, got a USB plug on the other end, and that is connected to the ASI Air. Uh, it's just this cable here, actually, just a normal USB plug goes into the back of the ASI Air, and that allows the ASI Air to control the mount. Uh, you can also use just a normal USB cable for this, I think, an A to B USB 2 cable. Uh, I'm using this uh, EQ mod cable because I just happen to have one, but I, as I say, I think you could probably use either kind of cable. But basically, it just then implements this EQ mod protocol 
uh, which allows the SIA to talk to the mount and control it and uh, do everything really. So uh, that's it, that's all plugged in. We'll power that up. Next thing I'm gonna do is to try and connect to it. So we go into the uh, Wi-Fi settings. We, there we are, we've got the SIA comes up in the list. We connect to that. That's connected. We open the SIA app. Enter the device. Okay, and this is telling us what we've got connected. So for the mount, we selected EQ mod mount, um, as that's the protocol we're going to use to communicate with the mount. And then uh, we put in the focal lengths of our um, main and guide scopes. We've got main camera, guide camera, and we've got the uh, autofocuser as well, the AF. Okay, now we press enter. There we are, we're all connected to the mount. Now, so to move the mount uh, with the ASIR, again, we've got on the screen at the moment the, uh, the four cursor arrows. Also, we can change the slew rate. That's where it says rate, you just click that. And then you can use this little slider to go up and down. So we're going right up to 800 times or right down to one times. So we'll go up to 800 times. So we're going for a fast slew. And then again, we can just use the, uh, the arrows, the same as I did really with the hand controller. It's exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. And as well, if your uh, phone uh, supports haptic feedback, then uh, these buttons also provide that. So it's actually quite a responsive thing to use, but um, you can take the slew rate down to something more sensible. I don't know, we might say, let's try 128 times. And as you can see, it's moving, but it's now moving very slowly. So today we've looked at two different methods of powering up your Skywatch Astara Adventure at GTI Mount. And we've also looked at three different ways of connecting to it and basically controlling it. There are other ways of controlling it. For example, you can connect a laptop to it using a USB cable, an EQ mod cable, or again using Wi-Fi. Uh, and once you've done that, you can then use programs like Nina or Sequence Generator Pro or Stellarium to control it. Anyway, really the next thing we need to do is to use the mount at night when we've got some clear skies. At the moment, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, the clear skies are pretty hard to come by. But as soon as I get a decent clear night, then I will record a video on the more in-depth use of this mount. In the meantime, the next video I'm going to make will be to do with telescopes. We'll be looking at the different types of telescopes that are available. And we'll also take a deeper look at the William Optics GT71 that we're using with this rig. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. And if you did, then perhaps you'll consider subscribing. It'd be great to have you on board. If you've got any questions or suggestions, then please put them in the comments. So, I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.